Here's a close-up of my Crochet Large Siberian Husky Dog. For this dog, I made the crochet eyes. So these are felt eyes. If you love these eyes, I have the measurements on a piece of um, paper that you can download for free in my Helen May Crochet YouTube channel Facebook group files. Sometimes I like to use charms on my crochet dogs. If you like the charms that I used, I used Raw Charm Vintage Victorian Blue Butterfly as well as the Raw Charm Vintage Victorian Turquoise Colored Jewel, Fake Jewel. These are both pins. I'm going to be using this one on the head so I'm going to actually use the pin into the crochet work to pin it in place. And then this one I'm going to put on the dog collar that I'm going to show you how to make. On some of my crochet dogs I like to use real dog collars. This one's a fluorescent one that fluoresces at night. But for, I'm going to, for those that don't want to use a real dog collar and they want to make their own, I'm going to be showing you how to make your own. For this crochet project you're going to need your 5.75 millimeter crochet hook as well as a tapestry needle and a pair of scissors. For mine, I like to put real name tags on the crochet dogs. This one says Princess. It's an engravable um, pet ID tag. On the back it also says Princess. But I'll show you how to make a heart out of crochet if you don't want to use a real name tag. The yarn that I chose is, I love this yarn, it's a metallic, really pretty turquoise metallic blue. Here's some information, this is named Peacock, the color, and here's some information about this yarn. And then I also chose the same style of yarn, the metallic white. You want to start with the yarn that's going to be your main color and we're going to make a slip knot. Just take your yarn, fold it over on itself to form a loop, take your crochet hook, go right through the loop and then hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and your thumb. Then just yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through the loop for your slip knot. Go ahead and cinch that knot and then just place the loop around your hook, not too tight and not too loose. Then we're going to make a chain. I'm just going to show four of them on video tutorial. You just yarn over, turn the hook upside down, go through the loop for your first chain, second, third, fourth. You want this chain to be the size of the neck of your crochet dog. I finished with a chain of 45. For this wave pattern for the collar, you need multiples of 10. Each portion of the wave has 5 stitches. And then to form the full wave, you need 10 stitches. So for my chain, I fit it around my dog, dog's neck. It's um, the 40 
wasn't quite long enough so I had to make five more stitches so I actually have half a wave with the 45 stitches. So now you want to take and hold the second chain from the hook then you're going to chain one now you have two chains you want to meaning that you have here this first chain and the second chain now you want to make a single crochet into the third chain from the hook which is a stitch that you're holding go ahead and take your crochet hook go into that third stitch bring up a loop and then make a single crochet and what that does is still leaves you with a stitch on the end and then the stitch that you just made so that's two that counts as two stitches then you're going to go into the next stitch over and make your third single crochet and then the next stitch over for your fourth single crochet and then the next stitch for your fifth single crochet so you made your first five stitches in the wave so five single crochet. Now you're going to make five double crochet. One double crochet into each of the next five stitches. So you go ahead and yarn over, go into the next stitch over, bring up a loop. You have three loops on the hook, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through two of the loops. Two loops remaining yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through the two remaining loops. Then you're going to make four more, one double crochet into each of the next four stitches, so yarn over, go into the next stitch, bring up a loop, make your double crochet, next stitch, make a double crochet. So that's my third. Fourth. And fifth. So now you see why you need multiples of 10 to complete the full wave. So five of the single crochet five of the double crochet. Now we're going to repeat this pattern all the way across back to the end so the next stitch will be five single crochet. So one single crochet into each of the next five stitches. Then you're going to make one double crochet into the next five stitches. I'm just going to back up on the video so you can see how I'm holding my fingers. So that was my second double crochet. Then I just completed another wave. So that's all there is to it. Five single crochet, five double crochet, five single crochet, five double crochet. Keep repeating this pattern all the way back across. 
So now you can see what my work looks like. And I'm up to the 40th stitch. And so you can see why I said it's multiple of 10 to get the full wave. Now I have five stitches left, but that's okay. Because now I'm just going to make my last five stitches. Since I finished with the double crochet, I'm going to make my last five stitches a single crochet in each of these stitches. Now I'm ready for the next row. This is what my first row looks like. If you didn't end up with the correct count on your collar, then you did something wrong and you should start over now to correct the mistake. Now for the next row, you're going to chain one, turn your work. So that first chain one counts as your first stitch for the next row or your first single crochet. You're not going to work into that first stitch, you're going to go into that next stitch over and make a single crochet. So for this next row you're going to match the previous row. So in the previous row I had five single crochets, so this next row will be five single crochet. So I just made my second, next stitch, and I go under both loops to make the stitch, make my single crochet, it's my third one, next one, fourth, and fifth. So now I'm ready for my double crochets, and you can see that I have five double crochet in the previous row. I'm going to make one double crochet into each of the next five stitches. And you're just going to repeat this wave pattern, five single crochet, one single crochet into each of the five stitches, and then one double crochet into each of the next five stitches. So that was my third double crochet. Fourth. and fifth. And then you just completed your first full wave. So go ahead, finish making five single crochet stitches and then five double crochet stitches and keep repeating that all the way across this next row. So now you can see the beautiful wave that's created with this stitch for your collar. And I just finished my last single crochet on the row. So now we're going to join our alternating color for the border. So now you're going to take whatever color you want for the border and you're going to bring up a loop with the yarn. Go ahead and chain one. Then turn your work. Cut the previous colored yarn. Make sure you leave enough of a loose yarn end for burying into your work. Then just take and tie a knot. Now you can take and chain one for your first stitch for the next row. Go ahead and turn your work. We're going to bury the loose yarn ends as we crochet. So because you made a chain one, you don't need to go into that first stitch below the chain one. You can go into the next stitch over. You want to grab both loops of the stitch, go behind the loose yarn ends, bring up a loop, make your single crochet and then you're just going to make one single crochet in every stitch across going behind the loose yarn ends until they're nice and buried so go ahead 
Finish making one single crochet in every stitch across. So I just finished my last single crochet along the top of the collar. Now I'm going to go ahead and make a single crochet on the end and I want to kind of turn my work because I'm going to continue down the side of the collar. So you're just going to evenly try and place your stitches along that side. And then I'm going behind the loose yarn end and turning my work. I'm going to place one more stitch in that same end there so that the collar will lie flat and won't curl. Then I can go into the next stitch along the bottom going behind my loose yarn end and continuing to make one single crochet in every stitch. You can see how the end I just kind of worked my way around to the bottom and I'm going to continue just making one single crochet in every stitch along the bottom. So go ahead, continue working your single crochets all the way back to where we started. So this is what my work looks like so far. I finished going around the border of the collar. Now I'm going to finish up. I'm going to go ahead and make a single crochet into the next stitch. Then I'm going to go ahead and slip stitch into the next stitch over. So just yarn over, turn the hook upside down and bring the yarn through both loops on the hook for a slip stitch. Then you can go ahead and finish off, just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to sew the two ends of the collar together around the dog. Make sure that you have the right side facing out and then wrap it around the dog's neck. Take your tapestry needle to sew the two ends of the collar. So I have my tapestry needle on the long end that I left for sewing. Make sure that your collar is not twisted, that you have the right side showing. Then you're going to take your tapestry needle and you're just going to grab the stitch on the opposite side and just sew the ends of the collar together. Then you just take and you can sew your charm on if you have a charm. Mine is a pin so I'm just going to pin it here. So if you have a pin then you can just bury your loose yarn ends. So I'm just going to kind of weave my loose yarn end through the collar. I like to go through a couple directions just to make sure it's nice and buried and secure. Then I'm just going to take and trim the loose yarn end. At this point you can also attach your name tag if you have one. And if you don't have one and you just want to crochet one, I'm going to show you how to crochet the heart name tag now. I'm also using Karen Simply Soft. Here's some information about this yarn. I use this yarn to make the crochet heart for the name tag. The color is watermelon, even though it looks like a hot pink, which is why I love using this one. So for this heart, you're going to be using the magic circle. If you need help with the magic circle, I do have a separate video tutorial that's nothing but the magic circle. But this is going to be a twist on the magic circle. So the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to take your yarn, you're going to fold it across your four fingers, use your thumb to stabilize. Then you're going to wrap the yarn around your two middle fingers. Then you're going to hold it in place with your pinky and your thumb. So 
You can use whatever size crochet hook that you want. It will affect the size of the heart. So you can kind of play with it to see what size that you want for your crochet heart. If you like the size of mine, I'm still using my 5.75 millimeter crochet hook. So the first thing you're going to do is just go under those two loops around the middle finger. You're going to bring up a loop. You're going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and then go through that loop for your slip knot. Then you're going to go back under those two loops around the middle fingers. You're going to bring up a loop. Now you have two loops on the hook. You're going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and then go through those two loops for a single crochet. Then you're going to chain three. One, two, three. So this first stitch will count as your first treble crochet in the magic circle. We're going to make four more treble crochet into the magic circle. So you're going to yarn over twice. One, two. You're going to go under those two loops around the middle fingers. You're going to bring up a loop. Now you have four loops on your crochet hook. You're going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through only two loops. That will leave three loops remaining. You're going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down, go through two more loops. Now you have two loops remaining. You're going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through the two remaining loops. So you've completed a total of two treble crochets. We need three more. Now I'm going to make two more. I'm just going to make them on video tutorial because sometimes some people have trouble with just a standard magic circle so when you're adding these different stitches it makes it a little bit more complicated if you're not used to it. So I have four. And now I have a total of five treble crochet in my magic circle. Now we're going to make four double crochet into the magic circle. So you just yarn over, go into the magic circle, bring up a loop, make your double crochet. And again you want a total of four of them, so I just made one. two, three, and four. Now you're just going to chain two. One, two. Then you're going to make four more double crochet. Let me repeat that last one. Then you're going to make five treble crochet. And what's nice about the magic circle for this is you can scoot the stitches over. So now I'm going to make five treble crochet.
and I just wanted to make them on video tutorials so the beginners can actually see how I'm doing it or making it. Then I'm going to make one double crochet. Then you're ready to take your forefinger and thumb and hold the base of all of the stitches. So this is how I'm holding it. Then you have these two loops on the opposite side. You're going to pull on one of them. If it doesn't close, let go and pull on the other one. And then just gently close it. Don't worry if you don't get it completely closed at this time. So you can see I closed it mostly. Then take that loose yarn end and pull on that. Then you can take, you see how you're starting to form a heart? Now you're going to take your crochet hook and you're going to go into the base stitch of that first treble that we made into the magic circle. So just take your crochet hook, go into that base stitch. Let's see if I can get in there. Then you're going to make a slip stitch. So you just yarn over and then turn the hook upside down and bring the yarn through both loops on the hook. Now you can go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to finish tying knots and sewing on any name tags that you want to put onto or sewing it onto the collar. And now what we're going to do is we're going to finish closing up the center of the magic circle. So just go ahead and turn your work over and just gently pull on that back. And you can see how it closes up nicely. Go ahead and turn your work back over. Now we want to finish creating the nice heart shape at the top. So take that long loose yarn end that you left, put it onto your tapestry needle. Then you're going to take and go right through the center of the magic circle with your tapestry needle. And then just cinch down the heart, get the shape that you want, turn over your work and tie a knot. And that will keep the heart shape that you want on the front. And that's all there is to making the heart. My name tag fits perfectly right in the center of the crochet heart. And then I'm just using the back loose yarn ends to secure the name tag to the heart, if you have a name tag. If not, you just use those two long loose yarn ends to sew the heart, the crochet heart, onto your collar. So this is what mine looks like. I pinned the brooch to the collar. And of course you don't want to have this pin if there's going to be young children because then they can remove it and, and poke themselves. Here is the name collar and the heart, the crochet heart behind it. Or name tag I should say. I just sewed that right to the bottom of the collar. See if I can bring that in view. So I tied the knot on the back of the collar and then just buried the loose yarn ends on the back. So this is just optional. This is just what I did with mine if you like the way that I did it. This is what she looks like after placing her collar. This is what the color looks like from behind.